Hey guys, so we are uh, just about to kick off. If there are any um, any technical issues, just shoot those over to Craig in chat. I'm sure he can help you out with that. Uh, today you are all on mute because there's quite a few of you and uh, we've got a lot to cover. So um, we'll be definitely getting around to your questions um, in just a moment. Yeah. So guys, um, I guess, uh, I'll just introduce myself and, and, and thank you all very much for coming. My name's Ed, I'm the, the Head of Customers um, and we're, I'm really excited to present um, to you who are really our, um, our kind of core group of, of counter people that represent us out in the world. Um, so you are the first to uh, receive this presentation about our new product and, uh, and thank you very much for booking in some time. Uh, so joining me is uh, Justin Chambers who has, uh, actually is the product owner. He built and designed this, uh, this thing that we're about to show you, uh, counter purchase. And uh, Craig Weinstein, our senior account manager, is, um, is staffing Q&A and chat. So uh, there is a little Q&A button in your Zoom window, uh, which is the best place for your questions. Um, please do feel free to submit them there at any stage. If we haven't answered them by the end of the demo, uh, then we will uh, run through some of those questions in a little Q&A uh, near the end of the presentation. Uh, and if we don't get round to everyone's questions, I can assure you we'll follow up with you personally. So uh, yeah, fire away with uh, any queries that you have there. And uh, yeah, let, let's kick it off. So, Every single counter customer out there is uh, using, you know, hopefully getting great value from our point of sale. And th um, thanks a lot to you guys for that. And uh, you, um, it's been a great journey uh, to kind of bring that cloud technology to our industry um, with your help. But all of those businesses are also purchasing things every day. And uh, the counter ecosystem and really the whole world um, doesn't have, has never had a great system for managing that. Um, all of our counter customers who are purchasing things are, are still using their uh, old systems that were born in the days of flip phones and fax machines and the, the best of us have kind of complex bulky spreadsheets uh, but none of it's elegant and none of it's really really user friendly. We've all seen this kind of this whiteboard situation uh, in the back of in the back of office or, or you know long lists uh, scribbled on till tape. Um, so we really are, uh, have, have been keenly aware that ordering sucks. When purchasing is, uh, is difficult and, and fraught with um, kind of inaccuracy, uh, there, are, there are major, major business problems that happen. If orders don't get placed, uh, then stock can run out and uh, you miss out on critical sales. Or contrarily, if you're ordering uh, too much stock, then wastage piles up and you lose control of your cost of goods. Um, and the, the process, uh, if it isn't tight, can result in these kind of crazy team-wide wild goose chases trying to track uh, things down. So um, yeah, all of that has really, the old way that uh, we're trying to change is that you have the situation where kind of one person in the business owns the supplier relationship. Usually, uh, the purchasing decisions are made um, by someone who has to be on site to figure out how much they have on hand and therefore how much they should order. Um, and all of this creates a, a lot of double handling throughout your team where uh, processes are being, are being duplicated, uh, especially when it comes to bookkeeping. Whereas with counter purchase, uh, staff always know what to get from who and when. Each of your stakeholders in your business can have the right information and the right tools to do their part of the process. You don't need to be on site because all your stock on hand is in the cloud. That information is, is accessible to you from wherever you're doing your purchasing from. And a full history, a full audit trail of all the activities on your purchasing supply chain is in one place, centrally managed and uh, reportable. At this stage, allow me to uh, introduce to you um, Justin Chambers, uh, my colleague, and uh, yeah, he's gonna uh, talk a little bit about uh, his design thinking and what went into building um, purchase, some of the, the background to those decisions, and uh, then show you, of course, uh, a demonstration, which I know you're all excited about. Thanks for that, Ed. Welcome, team. Uh, just a little bit about myself. Uh, I thought I'd let you know that uh, I've been working in hospitality for over 10 years before I started at Counter. Uh, I did some stints uh, work managing a roastery, actually. Um, so I've seen both sides of the equation in terms of 
placing orders through mostly text message um, or email and sometimes phone call um, to being on the receiving side of those orders, which uh, in a noisy roastery, uh, answering a phone is not the ideal way to, uh, to get the right product to the right business. Uh, so I've been quite passionate about um, getting this process under control and in uh, a far more efficient state. And what we've really tried to do is uh, move purchase away from, as you can see, an administrative black hole, which we all know it is, uh, to an operational powerhouse. So uh, taking the ordering and the managing of stock and just transforming it into that operational dream. So we worked quite closely uh, with Craig from Sonoma and uh, he had a lot to say uh, over the course of the development. And uh, as you can see on your screen, that's just one of the things he said uh, in the later stages of, of what we developed. So when we thought about this product, um, there was obviously a lot to consider. And what it all came down to was having all of these lines of communication was really inefficient. And not only was it inefficient, it was generally managed by one person. So we wanted to increase the efficiency and put it in the hands of anyone and everyone that's in the business so that there is no single person that has to be responsible. Uh, so this also bringing together in a centralized location means that there is no excuse not to know how to order. And part of that is uh, in what you'll see the, the new design of the UI is very familiar, has a very familiar feel to the point of sale. And, and we know that that is uh, from research that customers re, uh, respond to that very well and very quickly, meaning it's easy to learn and fast to adopt. And on top of that, it's all been optimized for mobile. So at any point in time, you can just jump in and uh, place your purchase orders from your personal device. So just gonna run through a product demo with you. Uh, we're going to cover placing an order, receiving an order, uh, setting order reminders so that uh, nobody forgets uh, when and who orders need to be placed with. And then there's also the step beyond that, which is recurring orders where it's, uh, it's a set and forget. So uh, let's get into it. So here we see the home screen of counter purchase. And in the top right corner there, you can see an orange button that says new order. We're gonna click there and we're gonna create a new order. Now we can see a list of suppliers here. We're gonna be ordering from St. Ali. Now we can see the categories that are available to us from St. Ali. Uh, we have blend, coffee, single estate and tools. So if we just click on blend, we can see that there are three options. You'll also notice on this screen that there is the uh, individual pricing, stock level, par level, and quantity. So at the moment, uh, we have zero of the stock and our par levels have not yet been set, uh, but we will select the quantity field and we will enter 25 kilos. Now at this point, uh, we might want to just tap on the menu item in the right-hand side and we will add a note to say that we want aged coffee. Also from that screen, you could adjust the quantity. Let's say we want 30. Now I will add a delivery note to say uh, delivery to the side door. so that the package is left in the correct location. Now, at this point, I can back out of the order because this might be something that is done mid-service when you realize that uh, you're running low on stock. It will automatically save as a draft. So you can see at the top here, I have an order with San Ali. It is uh, in a draft state. I can click back in here at any time and it will reload that order. I can add additional items to that order, like maybe some Mockermaster filter papers. And then I review the order, make sure that everything is correct. The delivery date is set to the 22nd. 
my delivery location is up to date and I can place the order. I'm now prompted for uh, an email to confirm with. I can CC or BCC. As you can see, uh, just an accounter is to and from as this is, uh, they're both my accounts. So I will send that email and that order has been placed. Now if we go back to the order screen, you will see that the status has been updated to placed. When the delivery comes, we can select that placed delivery on the purchase order list view and we can check it against what we receive. So the delivery has arrived. So once I start receiving, you'll see that the status is updated to delivered. Now in the delivery, I may have received less than 30 kilos of uh, feels good organic. So I'm just gonna select that and I'm gonna change it to 25. And I'll say, did not order, apply those changes uh, and I'm just going to jump into there's a little search field there above fills organic and I'm going to put in sterling. I actually received five kilos of the sterling. as replacement coffee for what was missing. So I'll apply those changes right there and I've put in some notes in so that we can see what has been ordered and what has been received. Now I'll add an invoice number Now at this point in receiving the order I may actually want to take a photo of the packing slip And there we have it, a photo of the packing slip that can be accessed by anyone to confirm what has and hasn't been received uh, for any confirmation that's needed between the uh, purchaser and the wholesaler. So I'll just go ahead and I'll receive that order. You'll see on the left hand side, second menu item is order reminders. Different suppliers require you to order at different times and different days of the week. Here we can set a reminder that will notify you when your order needs to be placed. So let's select Coca-Cola Amatel. We'll put in here a name. And that happens on Thursdays. And it needs to be in by three o'clock. You can select a starts on date and you can set the frequency. We have it set to weekly and we save that reminder. Now we have the weekly caller order. Every week on Thursday at 3 p.m. Now an extension of the weekly reminder, we have recurring orders. As you can see, we have two here already, but let's go ahead and create a new one. So we'll use San Ali for this again. Our weekly coffee order is 30 kilos of the Feels Good Organic. And now I want to set a schedule. So this is going to be my weekly coffee order. And that needs to be placed on Tuesday. As I know San Ali is roasting my coffee on Wednesdays, it needs to be in on Tuesday by 7 p.m. It's a weekly order. 
I'll click review and I'll save. Now, every week on Tuesday morning at 1 a.m., a draft will be created for that order in my purchase order view. Anytime from that point, I can edit the draft and I can submit it. If I don't edit it and I don't submit it and I don't delete it, it will be placed at 7 p.m. via the email attached to the account. The next menu item is par levels. You can see here, perfect amount every time. So let's get started. Here I have a list of all of my products and I can set par levels for each of them. You'll also notice that I have on hand and last stock count columns. This is telling me currently what stock I have on hand and when the last time a stock count was created for that item. The last stock count column is blank because I haven't created a stock count for these items. So here on page three, you can see that I have actually created a uh, stock count or I've updated the stock for the Jed Limited Malbec 2012 and 2013. Now, I'm gonna set a par level for each of these of 24, it's two cases. The value in adding par levels is so that at the time of creating the purchase order, I can see what stock I have on hand and the par level that is required, and I can order the difference. That way, I'm ordering the correct stock every time. If I jump back into purchase orders and I create a new order, so if I select sample coffee roasters and I search for products, I can type in 2012 and we'll see it's already actually come up here. It says uh, Jed Limited Malbec unassigned. That's because it hasn't been assigned to this particular supplier. My on hand stock is 49 bottles and my par level is 24. So I don't require any of those. But if I was to go 2013, we would see that my stock is only nine and my par is 24. So I could order the difference. Now I have a draft for that order of wine. The last item on the left-hand menu is stock transfers. Stock transfers are something that we're currently working on. This will allow multi-site businesses to transfer stock between themselves so that if one side is running low, another can replenish. At the bottom of the left-hand menu, you'll see your site name and your email. If you select that, it will surface a list of sites that have access to purchase so that you can easily switch between sites to create purchase orders for different sites. And that's counter purchase. Thanks guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that little demo. There's uh, there's a question that, uh, or a couple of questions that came through around what the uh, pricing tiers are gonna be. Uh, we're gonna offer a light version which is gonna add value to every counter customer out there. Uh, this is free and this is basically taking the existing uh, inventory and the what we've dubbed old purchase uh, functionality and it's going to add the new UI, which is, uh, as I'm sure you saw, much more efficient. Um, and it's also gonna add the order reminders so that there's no excuse for uh, anyone using counter to forget to place their purchases. Now, the next tier up is purchase basic. That's $40 per site per month. And that basically allows everybody to take their purchasing to the next level. This is where you're setting par levels, you're setting up recurring orders. Uh, you want that extra granularity around attaching uh, images to your orders and uh, basically setting up that purchase order sync um, so that 
uh, all purchase orders, once they're received, are actually going through to the accounting package. So uh, just on that note, in, uh, in regards to the purchase order sync, um, this question that came through uh, around when that actually occurs, and that's actually at the time of receiving the purchase order, after everything's been updated, uh, that is when the purchase order sync occurs. So uh, not before actually receiving um, the purchase order. Uh, another few people have raised uh, changing the cost price. Uh, so when you uh, basically go in and you start receiving an order, you can select the line items that you have ordered and it will allow you to change the quantity but also it will allow you to change the cost price. So if you are ordering uh, goods with a variable price, then at, that is the time at which you want to update that cost price um, so that it updates your floating average, which is across a 30 day period. And uh, one other thing to mention on that screen, which we, uh, we often get questions about, and there was a few raised in this session, is that you can change the cost tax. Now, um, just to clarify, the unit price that is entered is uh, in relation to the cost tax that is selected. So if it is tax free, then you would enter the tax free price. If it's tax inclusive, then uh, you would enter the cost including tax. Now, uh, another question is deleting a purchase order. So currently with the new system, you can delete a purchase order before it is placed. Once you have placed a purchase order, you can cancel the order. So uh, we have these two, uh, or basically once you place the order, we don't want to delete it because we know that the event has occurred and we can cancel it. So there'll be a red flag on that um, canceled purchase order and that will surface on your list view, makes it very clear, very easy to see what has been happening. Uh, now, in regards to uh, assigning your products to a supplier, this is just a default supplier. So you might actually have multiple suppliers that offer you the same product. Now, uh, as you saw with the Jed Malbec, uh, I did a search on a different supplier where it was not the default supplier for that Jed Malbec. When you do a search, it will show you unassigned products and allow you to select it and order from them as well. So you can actually order a single product from multiple suppliers. But at this point in time, it is just uh, a single supplier assigned as a default supplier. Thanks guys. Uh, now just passing over to Craig. Hey JC, thanks so much for taking us through everything counter purchase. If you want to get going, we want to help get started today. So we're going to send you an email with everything you need to get up and running. We're going to send you some guides on how to enable counter purchase if you haven't already, on how to add supplies, link them to products, and start using counter purchase in your business today. We'll also pop in a booking link. So if you want to have a chat to us, you can create some one on one on time there. And also, if you want to review this webinar, we're going to send you a recording for you and your team. Really looking forward to helping you use counter purchase today and in the future. Bye.